Hi, John Hall from Blues Creek Guitars. I'm sure you all know my smiling face by now. And my friend Maury decided to stop by today for Maury's music. We all know Maury's out there in Coaldale. And what we wanted to do, we wanted to discuss about neck resets. This was something that Maury wanted to do, so I happen to have some neck resets that are in the project. But we also decided that maybe you need to learn how to identify a problem with your guitar so that you will know if and when you do need a neck reset. So this little guy right now, if you look at this guitar, at the height, my action height at the 12th fret is a full 860 force, which is actually out of spec. And you measure that by taking a gauge and it will ride the top of the fret to underneath the string, the bass string. So when I measure this, I can see that I'm a full eighth. And I hope we can get this for the camera, but right here, this is how you want to measure it. The string is in a free state, right on the fret, and you want to see what the height is. Now, we know that this now is technically out of spec. We can see we do have some saddle, and we have plenty of saddle height here that we could make an adjustment by lowering the action down. However, there is a mythology on how to do this. There's definitely a pure methodology and we have to do things in a pre precise order. So if I went down here and took that saddle and ground it down and got my action height, what if you set the relief? So we got to check our relief first and the relief you're going to check by looking at the 12th fret to the nut. Now you can take a string and hold it down like this and come up to the 6th fret and take a look and see what you have. You'd like to see between, personally, I like to see between four and six thousands, but I think the Martin spec says four to nine. Now, when it has a string load, I actually have a very precise straight edge here. So I actually have a machine straight edge that I can set onto my neck, and that is precisely from the nut to the 12th fret. Now, you take notice the string tension is on here. If you took the string tension off, and you can see with this neck, and I put my, my straight edge on here, if you listen, it's tapping. So this neck without a string load actually will have a back bow in it, and I'll bet your guitar will also. So you always want to check the neck relief first. So I can hold the strings down and go down and take a look here, and I know for a fact that I'm out of spec. I purposely did this because now we're eight and about three and a half. That means three and a half high on the one, eight on the six. I'm going to take my truss rod wrench. Now this happens to have a two-way truss rod. Uh, some of the older guitars prior to 19, the mid 80s have a one-way truss rod. So I'm going to tighten the neck and you're going to put back bow into the neck. And while this does not always work to adjust your action, you're going to see that there is, is a resultant if your neck is out of whack. I purposely put this one out of whack and you're going to see I'm going to have to work a little bit to get that really tightened up. I'm starting to grab now. And I'll pull this out and I'm going to put about a half a turn in here because I, that's about what I took out. But generally what you want to do is set it that you take about a quarter turn. So now, I can hold here and I hold here, take a little bit more yet, and if you do it right, you're going to just barely see a little bit of clearance of the string at the 6th fret when you hold 1 and the 12th fret. So I'm actually taking about 3 quarters of a turn. But just in that little bit of turning, my action has now come down to right at three. And here I'm right at two. So that's perfect. So now you can see what may have looked like a neck reset isn't. I also want to show you the neck is right now in perfect condition. And if I put a straight edge on my neck and I slide it up here, you often hear well, if a straight edge hits the bridge, 
you're going to need a neck reset. Well, I'm hitting the bridge, and maybe Maury can get a good look here, and I'm hitting it probably by about a sixteenth of an inch. Why, why is that happening? Well, there is still a certain up bow in the neck, so that is going to tilt this up, which is going to push this down. So when you're checking a neck properly, that is about where it should be, just that it is underneath the line of the bridge, under tension. You're going to see when we back the tension off what's going to happen, because right now we're tuned to pitch. Watch what happens when we take this off. Oh, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> All we need now is a bagpipe and dueling banjos. <laughs> so you now, better put your mummer's costume on. <laughs> oh yeah, I look good in pink ostrich feathers. <laughs> so you can see I have all of my tension off. All right, now watch what happens to this straight edge. As you can see, I'm now on top of the bridge. And can you see that, Maury? Yes, I can. And we're approximately maybe a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch above the bridge. That's about where you want to be in a relaxed state. So there you go. You know the basics of doing a quick precursory check of your neck. So as long as you have that, you're good. Remember, a straight edge, when it is under tension, will be hitting the bridge. Once you put the tension on or take the tension off, it will ride back up because the neck is going to go from this to this. So I hope that gives you a little bit of information. So if you're worried about your guitar and you see that thing going on, you know, sometimes a good setup can really make the guitar play better. And it's good to have somebody you can trust work on your guitar. So, you know, we're always ready for you here. I'm sure you can find somebody near, near your own home. But uh, we're always here for you. So I hope that explains the ABCs of checking the neck. Now, we actually have a guitar that does need a neck reset. Now, if you recall about my one little setup video, I said about when your neck was uh, off tension, the straight edge would ride above the bridge. Here, you can see we have no tension, and my straight edge is hitting that bridge very solidly, probably by about more a lot more than I want to so you can see here in this one you can see that straight edge is just coming up and banging now I also know from previous experience we have to reset this neck so the reset is going to happen in three distinct ways number one a fret has to be pulled and I have to drill a hole I have to release the fingerboard extension and then we're going to inject steam and take the neck apart so, now, plain and simple, I have a soldering iron, and this I'm going to heat first. I have a special nippers that I, it's a precision nippers from Sears, and I ground it down so it's very chisel-like on its end. So when I heat this fret, and I'm always going to come up one fret from the body connection, I'm going to heat that up. And this is designed so I can get right underneath that fret and gently lift it out without doing, or I should say minimizing, the amount of damage that I will do to the fretboard. Um, I've been doing this for quite some time, and probably half of the time you'll be able to get one out without any damage. Sometimes you have minor damage. You never know how that wood's going to react. So that's heating up. And I have a bound board, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I actually have a little groove that I have cut into my little cheap soldering gun. And I'm just going to rock this back and forth, and then heat the fret up, and then pull it. And then we'll get this out of here, and we'll go to the next step. So you can see, I can feel that the heat's getting there. As you're looking at that, I can actually see a little bit of steaming on the wood itself, because it's heating up. There's a little bit of moisture in the wood, and that's going to start to steam. So now I can put this on here, and I can just grab a corner, and I'm gently rocking it, and I'm not using a lot of force. Because the more force you use, the more damage you can 
you can cause. So what I want the wood to do is I want it to release the fret. I don't want to pull the fret. And it's coming out nice and easy. And I just gently work across here. Voila! And isn't it wonderful? For the video, we get a nice clean pull. Yeah. Yay! So, next thing is drill holes, release the tension here, and get the fingerboard off and throw the steam to it. So now, frets out, we got a drill. I'm going to run two holes. I have to remember that there is a truss rod here, so I'm not going to drill right in the middle. And I'm going to drill... And you see how I angled that back a little bit. Now you can see that goes in. So I hit the pocket. That means that I'll be able to shoot steam down into there. Now the next thing I have to do is we're going to heat the fingerboard extension up so that we can expose and get the neck off. So I plug this in. This is a heating blanket. I have this set to full power. I can also put this to a variable controller and I can control the heat to almost anywhere that I want. Now I can already tell you that that is getting, getting warm. So I'm going to take something and put on here, right there, and you can see that's the heating element. I'm going to come down here and I want to be careful because I don't want to, uh, I don't want to damage the binding on this guitar. Sometimes you have necks that are bound, sometimes you have them that they aren't. So that's starting to work pretty well. And while that's going to be happening, that's good. I can turn my steam pot back on. And this will actually go pretty quick once things uh, release. Now, these blankets, the nice thing about these smaller blankets, I can get them that are pretty much to the size that I need. Uh, they used to come a lot wider. You'd have to put all kinds of protection on the top. I don't need to do that anymore. However, I got to have something there so I don't burn my thumb. And it won't take long for that heat to get through there, and I, I can actually feel that getting in. Uh, and this will be interesting to see, because most of you probably don't get to see this part of the process. If you take a Martin tour, you never really get into the repair department to see them doing this. So, taking the neck out, is uh, the first step of making the neck reset. And why do I need this? Remember, the top is going to cave in. That throws the neck angle. That takes that finger fingerboard, the fret plane, down below the bridge so that you can no longer adjust your saddle. Because you can see, this saddle is just too small and we really don't have uh, much adjustment. So once you cannot adjust the action with the saddle anymore and you maintained your neck relief and, and all that other happy stuff, that's when you're going to know you need a neck set. John, can you address how, how much saddle you want to see before you determine if it's enough saddle or not? Yeah, uh, that's a very good question because a lot of times if you have a drop in saddle, which this is, you can have a little bit more saddle height than if you were dealing with what they would call a through saddle. Uh, what I'm looking for when I do a neck set, I'd like to see about 180 thousandths of saddle coming out of the top of the bridge. Now, a lot of people will say, you know, that the, the brake angle is very important. And the brake angle is, but it's not as critical as a lot of people may think it is. What's more critical than anything is the overall string height. Okay, now I can feel that that's hot. So now I can take a little probe and I can just start working it in here and I can feel that the glue doesn't want to quite want to release yet. I do have a water bottle right here and this will actually go pretty quick. Once that heat penetrates the wood, gets down to the glue layer, uh, this usually goes pretty quick. Now there it goes. You can see the starting to go in. All right. Now I like to put a little bit of water on here. <clears throat> and 
And that just, for me, I just, something that I, I don't know why I do it. I just like to do it. Um, I don't want to overheat and I don't want to over dry out the top. Although it doesn't really matter because this guitar is actually going to be converted. So the top's actually going to come off. But I do like to try to make them nice. Now I can see I got in there a little bit, but it's still holding me off. And the feeling is pretty much easy to describe as trying to cut hard ice cream with a butter knife. Uh, that's kind of what the glue feels like. And sometimes you'll hear the squeak as you get going into it. I'm hungry now. Oh well. Uh, <laughs> we have soup. <laughs> I'm hungry for ice cream now. <laughs> okay, now you can see how that's going in there. I can actually probably take this off now. And how you work in here and how far you work. Here's the neck block. The end of the neck is here. And I can really feel the glue softened up. And you can see how far in that has gone. And just a little bit of water, I just think with the hot glue, just I think it helps to cut it out nicer. Now you can see the fingerboard extension lifting. See that? And you can see I'm almost all the way back there. Sean, is this guitar wood glue or hot glue? Uh, this one, I don't know. I know the neck has been reset on it. Uh, and is there a difference how you approach this? Uh, they Almost all of the wood glues are very similar. Hot glue, fish glue, cold hide glue, brown glue, tight bond, Elmer's. They all are similar in that they release about the same. Mm -hmm. uh, I do have a guitar upstairs right now that some, they actually used epoxy for the neck joint. So I'm trying to get that apart that I can actually save the guitar and uh, I thought that it might have been aftermarket, but it was actually done that way. And I won't tell you the company that did it, but uh, I'm not impressed by them. <laughs> so now, I'm ready for the steam. Now, this is very, very tricky. I have a very high-tech source of heat. Uh, $5 heat. I can make soup over here if I have to. It's a pressure cooker, all right? And these are just simple Harbor Freight air fittings. However, uh, this needle, believe it or not, is actually a veterinary needle that they use for uh, giving horses a shot. Uh, this is actually from Stu Mac. The original one was Stu Mac, but now I found out that they were a horse needle and my local vet was nice enough to give me some used horse needles okay so now we got the steam building up you can see it pushing out and I'm gonna wait for this to give a little bit more now I'm going to say that a friend of mine John Arnold one time gave me a we were talking about this and uh, he said well he'll do is he'll inject steam for maybe a minute and then he'll stop for a little while the steam, especially in older finishes, will cloud the finish a little bit. And it looks terrible, but it really isn't. Uh, you get moisture into the lacquer, it'll turn white. So if you happen to see your repairman working on a guitar, and you see that, don't panic. It's not a big deal. Now the hole I drill is a little smaller than what I need. But the steam is going to soften this wood. So I'll just let that work a little bit. And I can see steam coming out here. And whenever you shoot a video, Maury, there's always going to be that the Murphy's Law rule where that hole fits 99% of the time. 
So I may have to re-drill that. Now, you're going to see this needle protrude all the way into that joint. All right. And you can see the steam coming out. Now, what's really funny, the history of neck sets. At one time, they actually pulled the joint fret. They would cut that off, lift this, expose the joint, and steam it apart that way. Then I had also seen where they went in the back and came through the back. Uh, I don't know when they started doing it this way, but this is a much better way. The neck is starting to loosen. There's a little bit of water coming out along that joint. But you're going to see me go back and forth in the holes. And you can see I can get that down all the way now. And I'll show you the mechanics of the joint on this other guitar when we go to put that one back together in a minute. But this is exposing the glue joint and the surface joint so I can actually soften the glue. And you have to be careful because steam will burn you and it doesn't feel good. Now I do like to use two holes. That way I can let, you can see the steam coming out. Otherwise they end up with too much water inside the guitar, which is not a good thing. And I don't like that at all. I also have been dying, and I have permission of the owners to take this pick guard off. They want to see what's underneath it. So just for fun, in a minute, oh wonderful. We're going to take the steam and we're actually going to pull this this pick guard off to see what was done underneath this at one point. Now, I have enough steam. The joint is actually showing signs of failure, which means it's going to come apart. You can see all the water that was coming out of the joint. Now you can see that neck opening up. All still. Yeah. Now, this, this neck is going to come off in about 10 seconds. You want to do the countdown, Mark? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Happy New Year! There we go. So now, that is how we take a neck off. And I'm very happy to say, look at how little damage has been done. Uh, this is the hard part. Now, it's a shame I'm carrying this top off of this guitar, but uh, pull that out nice and clean. Here's my neck joint. Those two holes that I put in came right here. And you can see there's a lot of a lot of glue in there. And this, you asked me, this was done with tight bonds. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, since I have some steam going, and... Uh, we don't want to say the, the owner's guitar's name, but he wanted to see this thing, the damage that was done to it. And you can actually take these off with a hair dryer. I think I have a video on my YouTube Blues Creek channel. Cool. Okay. Don't take me long to feel how hot steam is. So you can see the steam actually softens the glue and it's almost working like a knife. Can you see that? Actually no damage underneath there. All right, so. Okay, this is blocked up, it doesn't matter. We can quiet this down, then we go to the next step of actually putting and figuring out where the neck's going to go.